Next, police in Delhi have banned all public gatherings ahead of a threatened march on India's capital on Tuesday by thousands of protesting farmers. It's happening in the run-up to the national elections in which millions of farmers uh, form a powerful voting bloc. While security forces have been deployed, concrete barricades erected on the roads into Delhi from neighbouring states. Members of more than 200 farming unions are planning to converge on the capital, demanding uh, greater protections, including guaranteed minimum crop prices agreed by Narendra Modi's government after another protest back in 2021. Well, let's get more now from uh, Nitin Srivastava, BBC India correspondent in Delhi. India's capital is preparing again preparing again for a massive farmers' protest, which might start from the 13th of February. This happened only two years back, when hundreds and thousands of farmers had laid siege to borders in Delhi. Bordering states of Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana were sealed. Traffic was disrupted. The farmers were demanding repeal of farm laws passed by the government in 2020. Now, they plan to start protesting again from the 13th of February, asking what they left back then. And the demands are same. The farmers want the government to guarantee a minimum support price for their annual yield of crops. They also want pensions to their farmers, and 200 unions across the country also want better working conditions in the farms and better promotion of their crops in terms of foreign imports and exports. What's important to be remembered is the fact that after almost a year-long agitation, the government had repealed the laws back in 2021 after India's top court had intervened. But the farmers say nothing much has changed and the government is still not serious. While the government says it is going to be in negotiations with the farmer to avoid a confrontation. Meanwhile, the capital Delhi has banned all processions. Weddings and funerals will need special permission for the government for at least one month. Traffic advisories have been issued while the government and the administration is leaving no stone unturned to ensure that huge numbers of farmers do not manage to reach the protesting sites, which has been earmarked in case the negotiations they talk with the government fail. The farmers are really adamant. Now, Citizens of Delhi and the adjoining areas are really, really bothered as to what the next month is going to be for them like if that happens again. Nitin Shrivastav, BBC News, Delhi. Right, let's get more from Natasha Bihel, an associate professor at Arizona State University. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you for having me. So just how significant is this if we do see large numbers of farmers on the streets again? Uh, this is very significant, and what it is is in many ways a continuation of the farmers' protests in 2020 when we saw um, sit-ins of about 300,000 supporters on the outskirts of Delhi um, who were agitating to repeal the farm laws uh, and successfully repealed them. Um, and this is one of the few kind of movements that has really brought pressure to bear on the BJP and has gotten them to um, repeal the law. So, well, on that, just, just explain to us what is the significance running up to an election? So what the BJP would say to you is that... Um, the BJP continues to characterize India as the world's largest democracy, while protesting farmers uh, would actually point to the fact that the BJP has systematically um, eroded the rights of uh, citizens, including protesters themselves. And so the BJP is currently erecting with the help of militarized police forces that are currently erecting concrete walls and barriers um, so that protesters cannot move into the Lee. They cannot um, engage right in their um, action 
uh, in, into Delhi. They've also shut down internet in uh, some places in Haryana as a way to uh, limit information flows. So these are just uh, two ways in which you see that the uh, BJP is demonstrating, right, this um, uh, stripping down of democratic rights. OK, and well, given, given that, given, given, sorry to jump in there just there, but given that's the backdrop, what do you think the chances are that the farmers get what they want here? So uh, the farmers, I think, um, are actually uh, demonstrating how social movements can um, challenge, right, uh, these illiberal moments in in democracies and how they can push back on um, on uh, you know powerful governments. Um, they were successful once, and uh, there's some likelihood that they will be successful in can, in that continuation of demands um, of what was left unmet and un done from the previous movement. It's funny, you're saying you think it's likely that they will get there. And as you were talking there, we were watching these huge concrete blocks being moved in, in, into place. It seems a kind of extraordinary difference between the image and what you think potentially the outcome will be. Well, I mean, we we don't know, of right? Course, so what course, happened yeah. before, no one predicted or imagined that the farmers would um, would be in the outskirts of Delhi for over a year. They no one imagined that the laws would be repealed. Um, and so I think we are mm. in this kind of terrain of, of the unimaginable, where democratic rights are being stripped and social movement, uh, the farmers movement is doing what it can to try to regain those rights um, in these very okay. brutal, oppressive moments, as you're seeing with those barriers going up. We will be keeping a close eye on what happens next. Uh, Natasha Bihal, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.